In this video, I'm going to be breaking down the project files for this animation. Welcome back to the series of videos where I'm trying to break down some of my project files and explain how I approach my animations. You can download the project file for this animation for free in the description, so be sure to check that out if you want to take a deeper dive yourself. I'm going to be breaking down all of these animations, so be sure to stay tuned for upcoming videos. So yeah, let's get right into it. So this animation is basically broken down into two main scenes, and in this first one we have these circles bouncing up like so, and then we have this transition here, and in this second scene we have the circle spinning around, and then we have this kind of cool transition back to white, which leads us back to the start. So let's get started and take a look at this first scene. Okay, so like I said, this first scene is our circles bouncing up like so. Um, so if we come and take a look at this first circle here, we can see how I'm animating this on. So I have um, some keyframes for scale and position. So at the start, this is scaling up with our anchor point at the bottom. Um, and then these position keyframes are making it come up like so and then land back in place. So we get a nice little bit of overshoot and we can see my uh, graph editor here. So we've got some nice curves to bring this on. Um, and then I'm just sort of carrying on that process for all of my circles. So if I have a look at the second circle, again, I have position and scale keyframes. So we have this one coming on and then our third circle layer and then our fourth. And then in order to have the circles move from side to side, I have a hierarchy of parenting going on, which basically means that the circle four is parented to circle three, and then circle three is parented to circle two, and then circle two is parented to the first circle. And then this first circle is parented to this um, null object here. And then if we have a look at the null object, you can see that we have these position keyframes so it's moving it to the right and then back to the left and then over to the right again. Um, and then I also have a little bit of rotation. So that gives us that nice little swaying effect. And then on all of the uh, individual circles, I also have some uh, rotation going on as well. So you can see on the second circle, um, we're rotating it a bit and then that will also affect the two circles above that. So then all of that put together gives us this nice sense of weight and it kind of looks like our like stack of circles have some actual physics to them and they're like kind of swaying around. So let's talk about how I got these textures inside these two circles here. So if we come and have a look at this first circle, uh, you can see that I have a copy, which is acting as a mat for this uh, line texture that we see inside. And then on the circle layer here, we also have this nice little bit of shading here. And to do that, I basically have a gradient ramp effect. And then I'm adding a fractal noise with the blending mode add, which is basically ignoring all this white space here and just showing through on the dark places. And then I have a tint effect, which is coloring uh, the noise to this kind of like green color. And then finally, I have a CC composite effect, which is multiplying the effect back onto the layer. So we get this nice little bit of shading. And then if we come and have a look inside this texture animation comp, I basically have these four different um, layout of lines um, that are basically cycling through like so. And then I have this uh, turbulent displace effect, which has an expression on the random seed, um, which is a wiggle expression with posterized time. So that is giving us this like nice little extra bit of movement to the texture. So then if we come back and look at this uh, texture animation layer, I've basically got a time remap um, effect going on, which is set to the length of uh, this comp. And then I've got this loop out expression, which is making the animation loop on past how long the actual composition is. And then on these two um, orange circles, I just have a layer style with a gradient um, like so. 
So then I think the last thing to talk about in this composition is how I'm doing this white solid above the circles. Um, and I'm basically just keyframing this by eye and trying to match the movement with the movement of the circles as they're popping up. Um, so if I come and have a look at the graph editor, you can see I'm just trying to give it some nice motion and match it as best I can to the circles moving up. Um, and I also have this null object here, which this top screen is parented to. Um, and I did this because I have so much uh, position keyframes here um, that I needed some extra movement just to help it move upwards. Um, and then here is our other white solid. And this basically just has some position keyframes, which moves up like so. Um, and this movement upwards is matched on this uh, circle layer here, which all the other circles are parented to. So with these keyframes, everything just moves up like so. And that's everything in this first composition. So I'm going to come back out and talk about some of the effects in this main comp. So to get this rotation um, transition that I've got going on here, I basically just have some rotation keyframes on this composition that are just rotating along like so. Um, and I also have some other keyframes on this comp, um, which is basically giving us a nice bit of uh, follow through animation. So these position keyframes are just moving it up and then back down slightly, um, which just helps uh, keep some movement going on as we're transitioning into the next scene. Um, and then I have these two shape layers down here, which are there to fill in the blank space that is getting cut off um, by the composition. Um, and these two are both parented to this comp, so they follow its rotation. And then I have this warp uh, adjustment layer here, um, and it's using a fisheye warp style, which is matching the rotation and just giving it this nice little bit of warping as we're transitioning to the next scene. So then here we are cutting away from this first composition as this second composition is taking over. Um, and then we're carrying on this rotation here inside this comp uh, with our circles. Uh, and we have this other adjustment layer here, which is again adding some warp. Um, and this is just like warping the circles down as we have this like flash of color and burst of circles in this next composition. Um, so let's jump into this comp and break some of this down. So then we have a similar kind of setup with our circles in this comp. Um, we have the same gradient and textures going on and all of the circles are parented to this first null object here, which has this initial burst of um, rotation animation. So we have a look at the speed graph. We can see it has this real fast curve here, which eases out nice and slowly. Um, and this null object is parented to this second one here, which then has a more subtle rotation like so in our graph editor which is then bringing our circles around like so. And before I go on any further of this animation, I'm just going to talk about how I did these background effects here. So let's take a look in this bottom composition here. So here I have basically segmented out a circle in Illustrator and brought it in with Overlord. Um, and then I've sort of offset these layers with the same rotation animation, which is bringing them all around like so. Um, and these are all parented to this null object here, which is layering some extra rotation on top. Um, and then when these come around and stop, we then have these lines bursting out from, uh, from the center. Um, and these are just basically a shape layer with a stroke. And I'm animating them with a trim pass effect, um, which allows me to animate the path along like so. So then if I come out of here and have a look at this other composition, we can see that this is just basically our burst of circles. Um, so I've just done this with some scale keyframes uh, like so. Uh, so just have them all coming up. Um, these again have a warp effect, which is just adding a slight warp as they're all scaling up. 
So then let's come back into this main composition and talk about how I did this next bit. So all of our circles in this comp are set as 3D layers. Um, so then this second null here is then parented to this one here, which is adding some Y rotation, which allows us to kind of rotate these like so. And then this, comp, uh, this null object here is then bringing them back around like so. Um, and while that is happening, we are cutting away from these two orange circles here down to these layers here. Um, and at the start, they are in exactly the same position. Um, but then we are adding some scale, some rotation and position keyframes to bring them up and around like so. Um, and to get this white fill in the center here, I'm basically copying these two red circles and then using one to mat inside the other, which then leaves us with just this center part here. And then also at this point, I am cutting away from these kind of greeny colored circles to this um, rotation here, which if we come and have a look in this comp, is basically a Cinema 4D PNG sequence of just this shape rotating like so. And I'm basically cutting and scaling up this layer like so to help match transition from the other circles to this 3D element. And then if I come along to the end of this layer, I have some position and scale keyframes which are moving the circle up like so. And then we are again cutting away to a shape layer now, which has some position and key, uh, scale keyframes to match. So we are coming up and then scaling down slightly and then coming down like so. Um, and to get this nice kind of smear effect, I have this echo effect, which is basically just copying the shape layer back um, and I can set this to however many copies I want. And then this no object here is also helping with this animation. So at, st at the start we're coming up and then this no object is taking over and bringing the circle back down. So if we come back out into the scene two comp and to match the circle bouncing up and coming back down, I basically have these um, orange circles with some position keyframes and I'm basically bringing them together and matching the scale of this inner circle so it stays inside this intersection here. And then this is the point we, where we cut to the shape layer and then we have it move up and back down as these orange circles are moving out of frame. And that all transitions us back to this blank space here where we start our loop again. So there we go. That is how I put this animation together. Um, I'm not going into too much detail with these videos, but I wanted to give you an idea of how I approached each part. Feel free to download the project file in the description and have a deeper dive yourself. I hope you've enjoyed and hopefully learned something new. The next project I'll be doing a breakdown of is this animation, so stay tuned for that. And thanks for watching. Thank you.